Hello and welcome back to Socially Awkward. We will be continuing where we left off, which, if you remember, is after they made it to the, um, the little fair, I think, festival, outdoor fair thingy, uh, with Tom, because this is still a Tom route, um, because there is no other content except for Tom content. So yeah, don't ask, you know, where the other guys are. So yeah, um, so Tom told... Uh, Jay's, like, little quote-unquote true story about what happened in mines with a cabin in the woods. And uh, John and Rask are there, too. <laughs> That's basically all that happened, really. I mean, nothing else happened. And, yeah. <laughs> so, I guess, without further ado, let us continue and, you know, see if that leads anywhere. There's... Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You find yourself laying on the ground, completely surrounded by a strange forest devoid of colors. Trees, leaves, and even the sky are all painted in varying shades of gray. The air feels still and stagnant, and the ground beneath you is damp, but it lacks any sense of warmth or coldness. Nor does the moisture cling to your fur. Where am I? As you stand up, you notice how remarkably effortlessly it is, as if your body has lost all sense of weight. You hop for a moment, only to realize your bare feet touching the ground. Hmm? Is this a lucid dream? You do a silly little dance by hopping and clicking your heels together, side to side, descending gently, confirming your suspicions. I got a full control over my body. Wait. Curiously, you lift up your feet, check the back of your shirt, pat your butt, and give a sigh of relief to know that it isn't wet or stained yellow. Oh, thank God it's not a bathroom dream. With that unnecessary information out of the way, you look around to try and make some semblance of sense. Hmm, it's so realistic, uh, besides the lack of color. Even if it's an open area, I don't even feel scared at all. Hmm, I wonder if I can make something appear. You're imagining a floating cup of corn kernels, gleaming with condensed milk and topped with powdered cheese. It suddenly appears into existence. However, all that happens is an increasing hunger coupled with a mounting pressure behind your eyes, as if they're about to pop. <sighs> Worth a shot. Not every day you can experience a lucid dream. Wonder what it's trying to tell me. Or telling myself. Meh, brain hurts. Shaking off your self-inflicted confusion, you start walking in a random direction. The natural sounds surround you, raw and primal, a sharp contrast to your usual auditory landscape, where noises are usually mixed with the cries of children or the drone of passing airplanes. You keep walking and walking and walking and walking. And walking and walking and walk. Where are you taking me, brain? Should I, I know where I'm going? Maybe the map app can help me. I have my phone? Apparently you do, yet its screen remains stubbornly white, displaying nothing. Oh no 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 In a panic frenzy, you swipe at the screen, give it a little shake, toggle it off and on, and tap at random spots, even inspecting the back for cracks until... Yeah! Hmm... Well, the flash works. Eh. Great. Now it's a glorified flashlight. This is turning into a nightmare. <laughs> Suddenly an arrow materializes on the screen. A wooden arrow for archery. With a green hue adorned with a goose feather fletching and a broad head tip. Whoa! You extend your arm away from your body as the arrow lifts itself out of the screen like a holographic 3D projection. 
It starts to spin, gradually slowing down, and then swings back and forth, mimicking the motion of a compass needle. Finally, it stops, pointing towards the west. Whoa. Hmm, that's more like it. Adventure! Following the arrow's direction, you tread through the grey woods until you arrive at a dirt road. There appears to be two thin tracks leading ahead. Hmm, like tracks? You lift up the phone and move it to the side to side. The arrow is undoubtedly following the tracks. Hmm, bike tracks, huh? Maybe I can meet up with Tom. But there's two. <gasps> is this a wet lucid dream? But with who? Um, you're alone. Or... Can you add someone else? Mm. Uh, Mac on? Mac on? With that exhilarating possibility driving you forward, you embark on a frantic sprint fueled by the anticipation of witnessing Tom and Macon in their underwear intimately pressed together in the most vividly imaginative gay posture possible. Following the tracks, you are led to a dilapidated carriage situated at the heart of a mansion in the middle of a clearing. Oh, mm, I guess it's not that kind of dream. White stone walls encircle the mansion, with a large broken gate lying on the floor. These walls bear the scars of a long-ago siege, now partially obscured by the tendrils of blackened dead branches. Wild rose bushes cling to the walls like a natural-made spike wall while old, rusted weapons stick out from both the walls and the ground, adding to the eerie atmosphere. Swords? Spears? Shields? What is my brain dreaming about? Carefully maneuvering through the grounds, avoiding shards of rusty metal, you eventually make your way inside the walls. Attached to the mansion are some worn-out stables with a broken-down carriage inside, an overgrown rose garden, and a small hovel, now in shambles, tucked away in a corner of the stone wall. Am I supposed to go in there? You check your guiding arrow, and sure enough, it points towards the front door. Whoa! Suddenly, the arrow starts to shake and propel itself towards the door. A burst of color follows its path, brilliantly painting the previously grayish background and creating a visible trail inside the open door. I guess I have nothing else to do. Surrounding you are cold stone walls that look ominous and decadent, with only a streak of color, floor, and a dimly lit room that paradoxically appears both bright and dark. Yeah. Now what is my brain trying to tell me? Is this a depiction of my cold stone heart? Nah. I don't kick hamsters. And it seems like it's leading me towards that room. But what kind of RPG gamer would I be without a little exploration? As mentioned, you walk around the hall while simultaneously spamming the X button in your head. You step out onto the balcony, observe the borders, all white and reminiscent of an unrendered open world. Mm, this is definitely an RPG castle. You approach a canvas displayed on the wall, featuring three figures, presumably representing the king, queen, and prince. They wear regal attire, yet curiously their heads like crowns. Hmm. The faces are blurred out. What is my brain trying to tell me? It's not like I'm an only child, so this can't be my family. A sudden cold draft brushes against your left shoulder, causing you to turn towards the enigmatic room. You linger, observing the room for a moment, and then cast another glance at the painting before continuing on your way. Hmm. I guess the game is prompting me to continue. Upon taking just five steps into the room, the door creakily but softly closed itself. Red flag! And I'm guessing it's also locked. Eh, typical. Hmm? As you stood there with the red flag proudly perched on your head, an odd sense of knowing washed over you. Despite not having consciously intended to conjure the red flag, you understood its significance. 
At least this confirms it's just a dream. You reach up to the flag and pluck it out like a mushroom and toss it to the side. Further in, you notice the interior has grown dark, a stark contrast to the bright monochrome colors of the outside. Yet the windows reveal a different scene. Outside, the view is engulfed in colorful darkness, illuminated only by the soft glow of the moonlight. Eh, weird. Then again, this is a dream, so I shouldn't be surprised. Inside are a bunch of bookshelves and drawers with a peculiar chair resting next to a cleaned-out fireplace. You walk up to one of the bookcases and browse through the titles, looking for something interesting to read. Mm, I'm not much of a reader. So, is my brain telling me to read more? Rude. Mm, none of these books have any titles on the spine. You randomly pick up a book and bring it to the moonlight. It has no title on its spine, and it does not look modern. However, it appears new. You flip it open, and the first page reads, Renard the Fox. Renard the Fox? Greetings. You heard a voice, eloquent in tone and smooth with a sing-song tempo, seemingly coming from all around you. Nevertheless, you press your ear on the pages as if the source is somewhere there. Such a gesture you are, Jace. The sound of a soft phantom-like laughter akin to a spectral audience fills the room. The fireplace suddenly lights itself, and from a swirling, windish blackness, a naked male figure manifests at the center of the room. His entire body seems crafted from the darkest, black, with only reflections of reddish hue from the fire lending shape to his form. Only his glowing eyes and reddish smile offer glimpses of emotion from this enigmatic creature. You stand still, waiting for any sudden movements. It brings great delight to my heart that you have arrived. If I had one... Where are they coming from? Pray, how doth my dearest friend fare on this day? This is indeed a nightmare, for this creature of black has committed your greatest and deepest fear. Socializing. Yes, you. Um, I'm sorry, but uh, do, do I know you? Gasp. How rude. Of me not to introduce myself. He stands in a dignified pose, hovering just inches above the ground, and bands at the waist, his hair swaying in a slow, gravity-defying dance atop his head. I am the guardian and the protector to all who live under my watchful eye. He then turns his body sideways, dramatically throwing one arm in the air, creating a dazzling dust-like confetti effect. The master of the forbidden magical art. With another theatrical flourish, he throws his other arm as well, tossing another fistful of sparkling dust-like confetti into the air. Purveyor of whimsical knickknacks and curiosities galore. The esteemed Lord and Grand Magus of the Galiga family. He pauses and then gracefully twirls through the air, settling into a reclined position. I am... Fox. Although his theatrics were indeed spectacular, you couldn't concentrate due to the fact that he is... Naked. Oh dear. With a snap of his fingers, a sleeveless tunic and baggy linen pants materialize right out of his body. You must forgive me. It had been quite a long time since I've had guests over. Now then. Come, take a seat. We have much to discuss. 
Suddenly, a wooden chair scoops you up from behind and glides through the air in a circular pattern before gently settling next to the fire. Mm. Where did he go? Up here? Ugh. I'm so excited that you came over. He plucks the red flag out of your head. Yeah. You can't believe how long it's been that I've been waiting to finally have someone to talk to. It's almost... maddening. Well? Huh? Do you mock me with your silence? Have the tongues of the future lords forgotten how to utter words in the presence of another? Yet here I stand, met with an almost palpable wall of reticence. Yeah. Or perhaps... It is the awe of encountering a being who defies death? You're dead? Ah, words finally emerged from the fortress of your reticence, like a lone sentinel atop the parapets of a silent castle. A murmur amidst the quiet, a chink in the armor of your wall-like demeanor. Perhaps there is hope yet for a dialogue to emerge from these echoing chambers of isolation. You don't have to be an ass about it. Why should being an ass be a cause for concern? After all, they're diligent creatures known for their industrious nature. Huh? But I will apologize if my previous remarks seemed unkind, for it was not my intent to cast aspirations upon your character. Walls, after all, have their purpose, whether they guard ancient secrets or shield delicate bosoms from their harsh winds of reality. I am not exactly sure what that all means, but ouch. I apologize. Uh, sure. So, uh... Who are you again? And how do you know my name? Do you not truly remember me? Uh, no. I don't believe I've met a, a black fox before. Oh, silly me, of course. I beg your forgiveness once again. I've only recently discovered that my powers are not what they used to be. Here, let me show you who I once was. <gasps> Do you not perceive? Tis but a mere fraction of my power. I could raz a whole... Raz a whole village with a simple snap. I have ascended beyond the bindings of her corporeal and mortal flesh. My being now exists in a realm unfeathered by the limitations of the physical world. Do you understand now what I am proposing? I pray that you're not attempting yet another exorcism, a pursuit I fear that you've yet to master, if I may be so bold. Says the ghost that I exorcised yesterday. How dare you! I insist that you refrain from labeling me as such a thing in the future. I am not a lost soul or a lingering apparition, but a magus who has evolved beyond the confines of the physical realm. The term is a mischaracterization that does not align with the reality of my existence. Okay, Karen. Curious, for your persistent use of this Karen leaves me feeling insulted. Though the source of the offense remains shrouded in obscurity. <laughs> eh. You vex me. You seem to trivialize the very essence of my being, treating such powers as if it were mere fluff in the wind. Have my words and my abilities fallen upon ears that fail to comprehend their depths and significance? I shall have you know that I was simply grappling with a bout of wariness during that rather ludicrous display that you put on. Nothing more, I assure you. You want to throw the book 
at his head for insulting your skills. But he does have a point. Something inside you is telling you that he is speaking the truth. And to set the record straight, I am not in any way, shape, or form a ghost. Mm, doubt. <laughs> I believe that it would be hard for you to find doubts in my words. Once again, you feel that familiar tug at your intuition. A subtle reassurance that this person isn't lying, even though your skepticism is putting up a vigorous protest. Mm, what makes you say that? Sadly, as much as I want to impart such knowledge onto thee. That, however, is not my foremost concern at this moment. Surely thou dost have the privilege of schooling for answers. Rather, I come with a proposition, Jace. A pact, an agreement that could be deemed the opportunity of a lifetime. Peasant, knights, lords, and even kings would be move to surrender their very fortunes for a chance at what I offer. Every word carries the weight of truth, their resonance undeniable, yet it is your overwhelming skepticism that serves as the final bastion, resisting the pull of his grandiose sales pitch. Behold, I, the Grand Magus, extend before you an opportunity that defies the mundane. Behold, for I present a deal that shall etch its name in the annals of your destiny. <laughs> What is so funny? Just my intrusive thoughts taking over. Carry on. I imagine, if you will, the wisdom of the ages crystallize into profound counsel. Envision the very essence of the astral realm's secrets, a tapestry of knowledge woven by my very hands. And let your mind wander to the powers that have danced through the cosmos, now ready to bow to your command. He pauses reading into your eyes for reaction. Feeling impatient with his long winding sales pitch, you give him a hard. And? And in exchange, my dear lord, I beseech you for a token, an offering that pales in comparison to the riches that I lay before you. All this in exchange for your... Not interested. But, but you didn't even let me finish. Uh, does it involve my soul or my body? N not entirely. That's a no. But I am offering myself as a loyal Grand Vizier. The might of the Grand Magus, a wealth of skills and knowledge all in your service. The entire realm would bow before you as if you were their king. Eh, sounds like work. Plus, I don't really want a sidekick. S sidekick? And I definitely don't want to be king. I already have five buildings to look after. What's more for a whole country? The fox gazes at your steadfast expression, taking a moment to study it closely as if searching for even the slightest crack. However, your countenance remains at resolute, showing no inclination whatsoever to be king. I... I... I'm astounded. You you really have no interest? Not even as a lordship? For your information, I am not the landlord. The landlord's title is under my grandma. I'm just looking after the apartments while I'm studying in college. G grandma College? Apartments? Do you medieval people not know what a grandma is? Uh, of course! Not... Enlighten me. Er, uh, you know, the mother of your mother? You mean Nana? Mm, that works too. I prefer to call mine Lola. Lola? Where are you from, Jace? Mm, Eastern Central. Eastern Central? The Eastern Central. The, the Saras? Ah, uh, yes, of course. It makes sense now. Your silky linens, your amusing set of wardrobes, and your nightly attire. You must be from China. No. Although, I am part Chinese from my mother's side. Then how in the deuce is a foreigner gain power over my land? Uh, cheap real estate? R real estate? Th these words that you're spouting. Where do you study? 
uh, Loopworks University. Loopworks? I've never heard of such a university. Maybe not in your time. M my time? Pray, uh, tell me, what year is it? It's the year of our Lord, 20XX. August 21st, 2023. Hi. Boop. Wow. No. Subscribe to our Patreon or something? <laughs> ah. Anywho. So. I guess we finally met the spirit that was supposedly haunting Jace's apartment. And I kind of feel like it might be related to the little marble that Jace found earlier. Uh, cause it kind of had like the same hue. It's like a, like a dark marble with like a reddish, uh, hue to it, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. I suppose this is where the, the horror aspect of socially awkward is supposed to come into play, but really it's just like comedy. <laughs> Um, I'm assuming that this fox was also the one that showed up as the eyes, and I will give Monchi the credit where it's due, where he knows how to do a lot with animations and visual novels to make it very fluid and just really good in general, especially when he has um, Jace's like facial reactions and things like that. That's like. I don't know where he learns it, but it's really, really good. Story-wise, <laughs> uh, might need a little bit of work, but at least he's writing a visual novel, so that's what counts, I guess. Um, yeah. Uh, my assumption is that this fox uh, is out of time, or meaning that he d is not aware of the passage of time. So, yeah. Anyway, so what were your thoughts on this? Uh, write down in the comments and thank you all for watching slash the sitting. If you would like to play Socially Awkward yourself, you could do so by going down into the link in the description for the, uh, well, for Monchi's Twitter page, which should have a direct link to the itch.io page where you can download Socially Awkward and play it yourself. Once again, only Tom's route is currently being worked on. So before you ask, where's my con? Where's Rask? Where's blah, blah, blah? There is no work on that yet. So what I have here is basically what exists right now. Suck it up. Uh, anyways, as you can see, he does have a Patreon and a coffee. So if you would like to support the Socially Awkward Project, well, the, the visual novel, I guess, you can, you know, either do a one-time donation through coffee or multiple donations through coffee if you want, or uh, subscribe to their Patreon where you get early access to bills of Socially Awkward and whatever else Monchibot offers through there. And also, I will post a link down for my coffee, too, in case you want to keep donating. That would be very nice if you do. You don't have to. I'm already reading Soul Creek. I'm already recording, etc., etc. But, you know, if you keep donating, it might incentivize me to do it faster. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I guess that's it for now, and I will see you guys in the next videos. Bye-bye.